Hey folks, welcome to the Rauher Flats. Uh, we are about to take the 2021 Bronco uh, Sport Badlands 4x4 up the hardest trail in this park, the Pioneer Trail. It's the same trail. We did the Defender, mm -hmm. G-Wagon, all the, the Land Cruiser, all the really hard SUVs. We do this. And the Bronco Sport is based on an Escape. Right. Uh, Escape chassis, C2 chassis, or right. architecture from Ford. Yes. It has a 2.0T, uh, 250 horsepower, 277 pounds of torque. Mm -hmm. Only the Badlands Edition comes standard with that four-cylinder. The rest of these uh, models of the Bronco Sport come with a three-cylinder turbo. It's got an eight-speed automatic gearbox. It weighs 3,733 pounds. But... It'll do zero to sixty in five point nine seconds and the quarter mile in fourteen and a half. That's which, pretty quick. Which will beat my <laughs> nineteen ninety four Mustang GT. That's not far behind my two thousand six STI. Right. That is funny. Right. It might be in mm -hmm. front of it. Right. Uh, the Badlands Edition gets uh, unique suspension settings, an extra inch of ground clearance, mm -hmm. hydraulic bump stops. A little more. The shocks are revalved. They're a little more hardcore yep. uh, to dissipate heat. Yes, it has 7.4 inches of wheel travel, 8.8 .8 inches of ground clearance, mm -hmm. uh, a seven-mode terrain system called Goat Modes. And Go <laughs> over any terrain? Yes, um, not the regular, greatest of all The time. regular Bronco Sport gets five modes, and this one adds the rock crawling mode and, uh, the, and um, sand mode. Right. Now, speaking of which, this trail is hard, and it's rock crawly. Yeah. So we're in locked four-wheel drive locked rear differential mm -hmm. and that's the diff from the focus rs interestingly right. enough so electric clutches hold for advanced track off traction control off right we definitely don't want traction control okay that's off uh drive and we're gonna go into rock crawly goat mode all right and uh and we have and the rear diff right now is not locked just the center diff is locked oh does it unlock for rock crawl modes i i've hit don't lock know. The light, the light just lit up. Now the light's on. Now it's so on. now we have everything locked. Okay. I am here. here. <laughs> what are we doing and why are we doing it? Here's where, well, I don't think this vehicle is meant to handle this trail. I really don't. But if it can do it, and it's a big if, mm -hmm. uh, on these 17-inch wheels and 28-inch tires. Scorpion all seasons. Yes. Um, if it can do it, then anyone could do almost anything that they, re you know what I mean? Like, yeah. if we can do this trail, then you can get to your ski house, you can beach surf, you can right. car you camp. camping, get to your mountain bike trail. Uh, this will take you to most of the places you need to go because most of those things are a lot easier to get to than what we're doing. Right. Know? And the beginning part of this trail that's coming up is potentially the most harrowing. Yes, I agree. Because um, it has a hole. There's a big hole you've got to <laughs> straddle. Um, and this is, uh, it's a small car, right? It's built on the escape frame. Right. The wheelbase is actually in between the wheelbase of the four-door full-size Bronco and the two-door full-size Bronco. It's like 105 inches, but the car is pretty small. It's eight inches shorter in length than the escape. My wife um, says that this is a small car doing an impression of a big car. Which is funny. It is funny, and I think it'd be accurate. Wow, this. All right, so this is that, very steep, very and there's steep. that hole that I think Ooh. I have to. I don't know if I can straddle it. I think I might have to go to the right of it. I think you have to go to the right of it as well. You can't straddle it, and oh man. Oh my god, it's gnarly. Oh, it's very gnarly. That left side is gonna. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I'm glad this car's narrow. Wow. 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 If we, if you had dipped into the left. If, we would have had a problem. Right, right. Now, well done, you. I will credit myself for the tire placement. Yes. But I didn't know if Bronco Sport was going to go up that hole. Yeah, that's a lot of rocks. And there. it actually, <laughs> it, it reflecting on it, was relatively effortless and painless. It seemed like the momentum was fine. It didn't slip. No. Uh, the diff's doing its job. Things are working wow, in this, that in this was, car. That right was right a little now. harrowing. It the, was. The left side, folks, I know it's hard to see. But there was a rock that was about a <laughs> foot tall and a shelf into a hole. And had we been six inches wider, yeah. we would have fallen in. And this, now this car 
is uh, the track is slightly wider than in the Escape. They put on wheel spacers that bring the wheels out flush with the body. Uh -huh. And I learned that that's, that's not, not legal in Europe, actually. You need some overhang, but oh. because this is only sold in North America, How you're, interesting. you're allowed to have that wide track. Oh, I do know that in Europe it is illegal to have tires that go further out past the body right. work. Yeah, yeah. You can't have it So flush. like the trophy truck style thing doesn't fly there. Mm -hmm. um, this is, uh, this is... Wow. So far, more effortless and impressive than I would have guessed. Yeah. We don't have a low range, right? But we have an eight-speed gearbox. So it's it, we have some ratios to work with. We do. We have a lot of ratios. Um, and that's probably, and the low ratio in first is what helps it get to that 60 time. Right. Uh, We've got also a very small turbocharger. Downside, of course, is it's a torque motor, right? It dies up top. Right. You know, it's not a sports car engine. The upside is... Even though it's a four-cylinder, right now I'm first gear, uh, two thousand RPM, mm -hmm. just Billy goading up yep. this without We're any trouble. Six miles per hour. Feels this like does have that um, that up that cruise control, the rock crawl yeah. cruise control, which I'm not using because I'm <laughs> having a pretty easy time with my right foot, <laughs> frankly. Wow! In, in fairness, impressed. in the Defender, I was intentionally picking. The hardest lines. Yes. In this, I am not doing that. I am picking lines on this that I am convinced I, not convinced, but that oh. I think I can make. Hear that? Hydraulic bump stop. Well, also this car luckily has skid plates covering the transmission, oh, engine, yeah. and rear differential. They're they're not like really big square skid plates, but they are three but millimeters thick steel. So they that, are skids, though. Yes, they are skids. They're meant for exactly that kind of thing. I, the things that were worrying me were the ground clearance and the size of the wheels and tires, neither of which right now seem to have caused us any headaches whatsoever. Yeah, and this has good breakover angles, and I believe the, the approach and departure angles are uh, not quite as good as the Cherokee Trailhawk, but they're very close. And this has a little bit more ground clearance than that car, which is one of its competitors. So far, bike. yeah, so far I'm impressed. I'm going to... I'm going to pause here for this dirt bike. This looks, I think, a little harder than it'll be because I can pick a line that's not so bad. Yeah, there's a lot of rocks showing, but we can actually weave around them pretty well. Um, so much of off-roading, as we've learned in All Cars Go to Heaven, watch our movie on Vimeo, yeah. uh, is about placing your wheels in an intelligent way. Like, make it as easy as possible, not as hard as possible. So I, I'm actually going to carve this like a canyon. Yeah. Wow. This is impressive. This is. I, I've, I, you know, to look at this car, and it doesn't have, you know, the Wild Peak tires, which are optional, and it doesn't have an adjustable suspension mm -hmm. or anything like that. It's not that tall. You'd think that, oh, man, that doesn't have enough clearance to do that. But it actually is getting it done. It is. I think that the... At minimum, it has eight inches of ground clearance. I that does, said, doesn't sound nine. like that much. Does it doesn't. It doesn't. It's not a ton compared to uh, Wranglers or cars like that. But if you're smart with your wheels, and I think you plan what you're going over, you know, if you put the tire over the rock instead of trying to straddle it, you're not going to ding a diff or something like that. This, uh, and I'll be honest, uh, this isn't very hard. I mean, the trail is hard, but I'm not having to do much thought adjustment. Or, or really work other than trying to see the easier side of the trail. Yeah. I mean, I'm, oh, let me spray this window so you guys can see like I can. Right here, I'm going to have to do a bit of a straddle. But that's okay. There we go. Oh, there we go. There. A little three-wheel motion. Go. And you could feel the kind of the diff doing a little bit of work there, you know? Right. So the diff in this, it's like you said, it's the upgraded Focus RS unit. It's the clutch pack thing. And this car doesn't have a traditional four-wheel drive with a transfer case. It has what's called a power transfer unit. Yeah. So what that is, is it's a little... AKA Haldex. Haldex. It's a gear that's attached to the output shaft of the engine, and it's spinning all the time. So the, the drive shaft is spinning on this all the time, and it's, that's the case with most front-wheel drive, all-wheel drive systems. Oh, really? So it's like a prop shaft? It's like a prop shaft. Oh. And then the, the diffs, in, or sorry, the clutch is engaged, and that sends the power when it needs mm -hmm. it. Um, now, the problem with those, uh, which I learned this online, is that they often overheat the brake because they're right next to the engine, the catalytic converter, and the transmission. Right. 
But these, uh, with the two liter engine oh, that and the Badlands, was that was skid plate. <laughs> um, they, they have a cooler. Uh, they have a water or a liquid cooler on the two liter engines up at that front power transfer unit. So it keeps it a little cool. And the only downside, or not the only downside, but the diffs in this do not have a cooler. So some off-road vehicles will have a cooler right. on that rear diff. This uh -huh. does not have that. So you could overheat it. Possibly. With too much crawling or sand driving. I wonder what level of, like, cause we're getting up this pretty good, and it doesn't feel like the diff is working that hard. No. And it's also, despite the fact that it's bright and sunny today, it's 46 degrees Fahrenheit uh, outside. Yeah. So it, it's, for California, uh, it is on the cooler side. In general and it's also kind of windy up here so we're gonna get we're you're getting a cool breeze blowing around the car we have an air cooled differential right now <laughs> exactly <laughs> um, it's pretty impressive and you know now that we're in rock mode which dampens the steering kickback so if you hit a big rock it won't break your thumbs yeah it slows that down a little bit it makes the throttle response a little slower you did more homework than me for this one, admittedly. Only on those things. Admittedly, you did more. I didn't I know didn't, how much it cost. I, I didn't know what it basics. weighed. It costs about thirty-six, thirty-seven thousand dollars as tested. The Badlands is like thirty-four nine, and this one has a couple of things. This lovely red costs money. Looks the good, uh, sunroof costs money. Um, I, there's a couple other little basic things that cost money. I'm gonna pick a line right through the middle oh. here. We're gonna go right through the middle, and then we're gonna straddle this. Ooh. It's, uh, this on one was left. risky. I know this one was risky. But there, yeah. Uh, oh no, but we're good. We're good. We're good, dude. This is sweet. This, this is, is really impressive. Sweet like, combination of intelligent electronics and decent hardware, and I think the right dimensions. And you can go a lot more places than people expect with a lot of cars today. I think this is the first transverse engine vehicle I've ever driven up this trail. They've all been longitudinally right. oriented. You know oh, what I mean? That's a good point. Yeah, the like Bronco is, Sport is transverse. Yeah, the like this Bronco is a front-wheel drive-based vehicle. It's not, you know, it's not a, a four by four. You know, from the fact, I mean, it is. You know what I mean, it right? It, yeah, yeah. It, it didn't start its life as four as by a four, four, by four architecture. Or a truck or something, right? Yeah. Like the big Bronco is a body-on-frame kind of truck-based vehicle, and this is obviously based on the Escape. It shows you how far, like, it's it. It won't get you all the way, but like. Tires and tech will go a long mm -hmm. way. Absolutely. Do you remember, I think like 2012, we drove the Jeep Compass at a, at a, a Dodge launch. Was it the Compass or the Patriot? I we forget drove both, which, which are the same car, yeah. just with different bodies. Yeah. Pick which one you think is least ugly. Uh, but it had hill ascent control. And we're yeah. like, what are you talking about? And then the thing did the same trail that we were testing Wranglers on. Yeah, it was actually surprisingly really impressive. This is obviously supposed to compete with those more entry-level Jeeps, of right? Course, it's yes. not... A Wrangler. It's no. not a Grand Cherokee. This is a Compass or a Patriot or a, a Liberty. Cherokee Trailhawk or, yeah, or the Renegade. It's uh, very similar in size to the Renegade, although this starts a few thousand dollars more. The Renegade stinks, but remember when yeah. Spinelli drove it over a mountain without breaking it? Right? He did. He drove it over Engineer's Pass. He did uh, drive it over Google it. Very difficult, 11,000 feet. Yeah. And he had the only vehicle that made it out of the <laughs> three we had with us. Well, the other two were really not equipped, but... <laughs> right. But this, like, it... To look at it uh, parked on the street, I was sure it would not... I wasn't sure, but I was like, there's no way it's going to get up this. It doesn't have the tires mm -hmm. or the ground clearance, but then it does. I mean, at least to this point. I, I think if we've made it this far, we're going to make it because I think too. there's only a few sections beyond this that are really difficult and we're just going to avoid those. Would you like to drive? Uh, yeah. And let's you get, actually, over. let's get a drive by on this hill first. Front visibility in this is really impressive. When I first saw it, I thought it would feel like an FJ where you're kind of like peeking out of a cardboard box, but it actually has quite a bit of visibility. And I like that they put these ridges on each of the fenders. Because they're right above the tires and it helps you with your tire placement. Um, the G-Wagon also had something similar with its blinkers mounted uh, just at the outside of the fenders. And again, helps you place your tires over rocks. Stuff like that is very, very handy if you're off-roading. Man, this thing, I mean, it is quiet inside. The engine, <laughs> the engine's exhaust note uh, can only be described as like, Honda Whisper Generator is just this little but doesn't matter it's getting us where we need to go all right 
next hill. I mean, this is these hills are very steep. If you want to go on Google Earth, look up Rower Flats, go to 3D view, and you'll see. I mean, this I don't know what this incline is because this doesn't have a, uh, a meter in the gauges. Little wheel spin there. Got the rear diff locked, so it should be sending 50. 50% uh, front and rear and 25% to each rear tire. I, it was so easy. So easy for the baby Bronco. Man, well, when I first saw this thing, I was like thinking like, oh, it's like a, a prepubescent pre-runner. You know, it, it's, it's got sand mode and it's got these uh, shocks that are really good at dissipating heat and, and they kind of aimed for this you know, it followed the marketing of like the quicker running over sand driving. Um, but so I thought it wouldn't be that great, but it's doing everything. This no, thing is just cruising. Gets awful steep when you got to run up it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I was trying to tell the people how steep it is to look on Google Earth, but <laughs> it's you're, pretty you're steep. A better meter. It's pretty steep. Mm. Okay. Continue. I, this is pretty effortless. Easy. Yeah. Very easy. Really easy. Whew. The engine is so quiet. Man, you always think you're in pretty good shape, so you got to run up a hill. This thing's doing so well, I kind of want to choose the more difficult line. You can get up that. Up the center, right? Yeah, right up the middle. Yeah. This isn't the crazy thing with the, the breakover that you uh, experienced in the... No, the that's up there. Bad. That's further up. Uh, well, we'll just go. <laughs> we'll, see. we'll see. Right here? Yeah. We'll there. Up on the rocks. There, and then a couple degrees to the right. We should use our front view camera. Front cameras. Oh, yeah, easy. perfect, right? Go, yeah, good, good, good. Throttle. Oh, I could go either way. Yeah, stay to the right. Throttle. No problem. There you go. Straight, straight, straight. Perfect. So, just cruising. Right. Little tip. These tires are don't, really impressive. You're when you're going on and off the throttle. Yeah. Come off less. Always keep going up. Don't. Don't stop on the hill. <laughs> yeah. You know, stay to the right here. You know what I mean? So, like, you cut when you're going on and off like that, right, it's better to keep your little momentum moving up. Yeah. Especially with this turbocharged engine. You know, you yeah, want to keep, keep a little, little load boost. on it. So, that you got so a little here, bit yeah, of bend up, bend up to the left there. Yeah. It's going to go right here. Yeah, keep yeah, over yeah. Over there. Yep. Throttle. 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 There you go. I mean, this thing's just cruising up. Like, not difficult, uh, right? No, I'm, I'm basically holding my foot in the same place, going nice and slow. We're at seven miles an hour. The really gnarly one is up there. Yeah, we're going to skip that. <laughs> I, what, what car were you in when you just... The you Defender. Were just it, was like, the def and it was the Defender. The whole world just tilted like this. Yeah, it was the Defender. Oh, it was my good. God. <laughs> yeah, check out Matt's Instagram to find that clip. I it put it up fun. there. It's also in the Defender review. In general, so far... The ruggedness impresses me. Things that don't really impress me. Mm. I'm a little bit annoyed at the mixture of materials. Some of the materials feel very expensive, like this uh, fake suede here. Yeah. And some of the leather feels nice and expensive. And some of the plastic feels really cheap. So it's a it's a bit of a mixture. Um, I understand at 35 grand, that's what you're going to get. I love this tray. Uh, the tray little underneath the tray. MMI, yeah, little great little storage tray. I love all the power ports. There's USBs, 12 volts, and multiple 110 outlets. So yeah, more than one 110. One in the back, one in the back seat, and one in the trunk, right? Yeah. So if you wanted to do, you know, obviously we all have an, a a life that in one way or another revolves around our digital devices and whatnot. So even when we're camping, even when we're off the grid, odds are you've got stuff to charge. This thing could probably charge a bunch of stuff at the same time. Yeah, that's really cool. So that's cool. good. Um, Work for me. Wireless charging works. CarPlay works. Um, I think the wireless charging was an option on top of the Badlands, right? That brought this price up I a little bit. I think it's an option, yeah. Same with the Bang & Offset stereo. Yeah, the stereo is actually all right. Okay, here is one of the holes. So oh, yeah. what you might want to do, you can straddle. You can straddle. Should I go around the right, though? No, I would say straddle the hole and then turn right. Yeah. See what I'm saying? And avoid that left hole. Yeah, yeah. We'll go over yeah, the yeah. center. Exactly. And then go over the center. Yeah. Right. You got it. Don't worry about it. Point it up. Bronco Sport. All right. And now. now put the right one Yeah. There. So you can put the right there. Put the right there. And then basically go straight. Go straight. Go straight. 
Go and straight. Go, go straight and then left. bend it left up over the hill. How's our break? Until we can see. Breakover's good. Yeah. Use our We're camera. fine. And then wow. per, just go straight. And just cruise. I would have thought this we'd bang amazing. the nose a couple I, times too. as well, and we the have not. The approach is really good here. Yeah. And if you look at the sides of it, especially the departure angle, so we're going very all steep. the way up the right side here. Okay. Far right. Yeah, that's These, the bad That's way. the super gnarly the ones way. up there. Yeah. I mean, as long I don't as we think don't it cut would. A tire, I'm not sure it would make that. Wood. I think. No, but I don't. But we think stay it would. to the right. Really going to keep our right tire right up against the right trees. up against the berm and the trees there. Yeah. Yeah. Let's follow these tracks. Stay in the gas. There's going to be a hole. Just, you see the hole right here? The left hole? A little yeah, left hole, yep. Yeah. No but just throttle over. There's the hole. Same. Up, 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 up. Yes! We tapped there. Oh, this is, well, this is that's okay. We're going to go straight. Go straight up it. Watch this. We're going to billy go right up this. Just a little I wheel can feel it a little. It's working a little bit. Yeah, just working. But wow. the inertia was there. Wow. It kept us going up. I'm very impressed. So it's not, as, as it's shifting power, and as it's you know moving traction around, I would say it's not as it, it, go 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 yeah, go. I'm, just, I'm worried about this rock. In no the no center. skid plates. You're good. Boom. <laughs> it's not quite as smooth as the Defender or the G wagon, but it is working. It is getting you over the obstacles. Absolutely. Um, you know, ultimately, that's what it's about. Because most people that buy these are going no to one's use going them to this. go up fire roads, to go to think. I mean, they're going to drive around town. They're going to go skiing, stuff like that. But I think what's good is if you end up in a situation where you're on a road where they, you're not familiar with, yeah. that you go, oh my God, this is too difficult. It's probably not. Here's a hole. Yeah. Straight into it. It really probably isn't. Oh, that was a smaller hole than I thought it would be. Man, I'm impressed. I know I keep saying that. Um, seats. When I first sat down, I was like, ooh, these seats are nice. And then you're like, really? And we waited about 12 seconds. And you you were accurate. The, right. The lower cushion is it's too way small. too short. Yeah, it's too, too short, short and too narrow. Yeah. Um, it's the, the seats are just fine. Um, the, the mixed materials on this upgrade are fine. It's not, it's not great. It's not impressive. It's acceptable. But the size of the seat, and I, I know what everyone's going to say, Matt, you're a fat ass. You've got a literal fat ass. And that's partially true. I think you should hug the left all the way. Let's stay all the way left. Yeah, right there. <laughs> Stay right, go right, go right. Yeah, straight, 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 straight. We're gonna straddle. We're gonna straddle. Wow. Now left, stay now left stay left. Way in the air. Yeah, now stay left. We should have filmed now this. Now stay left. This we is good. Filmed this section. No, this is good. What do you think we're doing? We are filming this. Come on. Yes. We'd stop for drive by. Okay, wait, folks, now, now, now. Stay over to the left of yeah, this this, this hole here. Yeah. And then we're gonna this bend it over to the right. And then you're gonna you're gonna go to the right now. Yeah, the Cut right's it right. Easy. The right's easy. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, even in the easy part, this is a very challenging trail. I wouldn't There's a lot of surfaces. We have really loose sand, yeah. very sharp rocks, um, a lot of random holes you can kind of tip into that test the break over and approach. Like, it's, it's a good trail. It's a good trail. That's why we use this as the TST off-road testing grounds. Official. Official. Um, I have not sat in the back seat. I think I could sit behind myself okay. You could sit behind yourself, but not me. would be great. Sitting behind me wouldn't be too fun in this. Yeah. If you want to lounge out in the front, it's at the expense of the back for sure. Yeah, and the back seat doesn't recline, which is kind of, I feel like these days, it, that makes such a big difference. Even if you don't have a lot of room in the back, if you can change the angle, it makes it a lot, lot better. Uh, what I do like is that the, the back of the rear seat has this like rubber plastic coating on it. So yep. when you fold the seats flat and... forward, you can load stuff in and you don't have to throw down a blanket or right. something else to cover it. That's really smart. And you've got the pop-out rear glass. The pop-out oh, rear yeah. glass means you can throw the surfboard right in through that window. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have to strap things to the roof. Right. It means you can do other things that Go to don't. Home Depot, whatever. Yeah, two by fours and whatnot. Yeah. Um, the roof is strong enough to hold a tent should you want Just to do left. such a thing. Oh, is it? Yeah. Yes. So we went up the suit, the, the middle with the Defender, right. which I would not do in this. No. We, not, we don't have the ground clearance for that. That's when it really does come into play. All right, so but this is going to be tricky because yeah. there's a hole. Big hole. Yeah. But big I'm hole. straddle it and yeah. stay on the gas Very here. Very good. Yep. On, power, on power, on power, on power. Stay a little yep. left. Yep. Yeah, there we go. These cameras are On handy. power, on power. Put the right wheels on those rocks. This front camera is really doing good work here. It That's is. That's a very handy thing to have. And to the right. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. 
Dude, this is great. This is great. And keep your thumbs is out not, of the wheel, folks. It's not working very hard. No, I, we were, I think we were feeling the diffs more <clears throat> on these last two sections than down below, but that's what the, 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 their job. You know, they send spin, they send the torque around, and... It's good. We got but, one yeah. one section left, and then we're at the top. This is this is amazing. I was a little. I was actually kind of nervous. I thought yeah. we might get stuck on some, <laughs> or break something. We spent the whole drive here going. What are we gonna break? What do we do? What if it, what if we pop a tire? What if we get stuck? What do we do? I thought I thought we would smash the front bumper because I didn't realize it had as much approach angle as it has. It has quite a lot of usable approach angle. Um, it doesn't look like it has that much. I think yeah. they've done a good job of pushing the wheels uh, to the corners of the vehicle. So That's now we're on some loose baseball sized rocks. Yeah. Which I'm going to be careful with because these are the things that cut tires. That's where know. you get a little stabbed. Especially hammer. when the, the sidewall on this is not like uh, it is with off-road tires like KO2s. You know, and those things, they strengthen the sidewall. They put those little um, extra bits of rubber for mm -hmm. grip and armor on the outsides. These Scorpions don't have that. This is an all-season tire. Yeah. You got the Wild Peaks optional. But remember, I went up this with 20s. 20s yeah. all seasons on the on the uh, G wagon. I mean, if it's dry, you know, I think all seasons do a good job on on the bigger rocks. Um, I think you can fit 31 inch tires on the. They say uh, you can. On this without a lift. But the Badlands has one. What was it? One inch more ground clearance than the regular. Yes. Uh, Doesn't sound like much, but no. I mean, but I guess it's enough, huh? It matters. Dick jokes, ladies and gentlemen. Dick jokes. Right. Left and right. Follow the gray. Yeah. Gandalf the gray. Here's a nice combination of sort of bouldery rocks, uh, sand, and loose gravel. Whoop. Yeah, Spit that's plates. That's why we have them. I think if you're ever buying any kind of SUV and skid plates are optional, you should tick that option. <laughs> yeah. Because once you pierce an oil pan, you're gonna go, man, I wish I'd spent that $400. Some, somebody learned that the hard way. See that sign? Most difficult. Round that sign flat. says round Black diamond. Black diamond, most difficult. I like when you could do them. I mean, doing a, a trail that's labeled most difficult in an entry level, you know, trucklet is pretty satisfying. Yeah, you don't want to go to a trail that says like, "Well, it's a good starter for you." Left. There was a, there was a big and hard to see hole there. Yeah, you know, you just it's just scrambling up. Pretty good. Yeah. Pretty, pretty good. Pretty pretty good. And we don't have any warning lights. The diff the temp is fine, I yeah. assume. I think the diff's We're okay. I bet you if you wanted to really heat up the diff, it would be like in the sand. Like yeah. drifting in the sand. Like doing this low speed stuff yeah. doesn't really seem like that's the kind of thing that would make a diff super angry. Yeah, this I is think, the, you know, the, the very last steep section though. Wow. No we're, problem. We're at the top. That that bush right there is the top. The tip of the top. Yeah. So you go left. Go left and then go up the, uh, make a right, the right up there. Amazing. And that is the top of the mountain. Bronco Sport has gone up. In We're in drive. We're not drive. in manual at all. Drive. And all we did drive was we pressed way. two, three buttons. We locked the four wheel drive button, locked the diff button, traction control off button. Bang a right here. Traction control off button and then smash the gas, point it up the hill. Boom. We put on the goat mode. Yeah, I think it's staying in first the whole time, which has been fine. Yeah. We, this doesn't have a, a two-speed or low transfer case, but... But with eight gears. We didn't need one. Eight gears. And here it is. This. Wow. Top of the hill. <laughs> That's great. Wow. I mean, really impressive. Like, admittedly, on the road, there's nothing to write home about about this. You know, yes, it goes fast enough if you smash the gas, but it doesn't feel fast. Well, I just, I got in it this morning. So how, what's your experience been driving on the on road? Highway? Like quiet, easy, whatever. It, it, forgettable. I mean, frankly, it's just, it's, it's kind of forgettable on the highway. Mm -hmm. It, it doesn't have any horrible habits, but it's, it's nothing to write home about, but it's this, it's, it does, it can do this without being super trucky. Yeah. And most people that are buying a crossover 
for commuting, I think you, they want forgettable on the highway. They want to get in, have it be comfortable, have it track straight, mm-hmm. and be quiet. You know, they don't they don't want something that is darting around because the you know the turn in is aggressive. Right. I, I see it as like Ford's Subaru Outback, but more capable. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like looking at it versus looking at a Jeep Cherokee Trailhawk, you go. I think this is better looking than a Trailhawk. I happen to think the Cherokee is particularly ugly. Yeah. But but you look at the wheels and tires and you go, well, that's going to be better off-road than this. And I'm not saying this is necessarily better, but I'm saying that this got up the hardest trail in the park. Yeah. Without any difficulty at all. Right. So and that's I, th- I think there's a lot of cars that get sold on, you know, well, this one can do far more than that because look at these things. And it's like if you actually apply... Uh, your right foot and your hands well yeah. and, the, and the car is pretty good you'll probably get to the same places you yeah know? the differences would be really really small between the two right this is the kind of car where if you lead an outdoorsy lifestyle it could contribute meaningfully functionally to that lifestyle yeah if you're good. looking for driving dynamics mm. Yeah, you know. and if you want to do something more hardcore with really big rocks, you're going to need more ground clearance. You're going to need more, but or something. But like, that's pretty I good, know. man. You could charge your e-bike, like your, you know, you could drag your mountain bikes out yeah. here, charge them in the back while you drive, which is yeah. pretty cool on the 110 if the amperage is okay. So I don't know, pretty, pretty, pretty impressive, bad. pretty impressive. I mean, for 35 grand, you know, stock vehicle, tough trail, really good. Yeah. Technology is good. So shout out to Ford for letting us have a go. Thank you very much. Uh, we really appreciate that. Thanks to you for watching. We know these off-road videos are long, but I know that uh, a certain very small faction of you really like them. Absolutely. <laughs> and uh, we'll Please see Please listen to the time. podcast. Smoking Tire Podcast. Yes. Uh, available. We put up twice a week, um, both on audio and the YouTube channel is uh, the Smoking Tire Podcast. All right. That's, That's our it. video. Bye. And remember... Always fight your tickets. Use code TST10 on the Off the Record app available in the Android and iOS store or go to offtherecord.com TST.